Hey folks, welcome back to another TWIP Pro Photo Critique. This is critique number 32. This is TWIP. All right, we're back for another This Week in Photo or TWIP Pro Photo Critique session. This is gonna be good. Looks like we have about 14 images to go through uh, for this week's critique session. As usual, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Mr. Troy Miller, who's going to uh, help me step through these. What's going on, Troy Miller? Hey, just hanging out. It's another week. Every time I, these come up, I'm like, man, another week is gone. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't they come up fast? It's crazy, they right? Do. They do. They come up super fast. But I'm excited. We got some uh, themed images in here this time from from our last theme so yeah yeah i'm excited all right well let's without further ado i think we should just dive right into these so um as usual i have twip pro up on my screen here and i'm gonna bring up the first one looks like it's from our friend peter levshin shot this with a canon 5d mark ii uh in prague looks like very small depth of field he says i'll bring this up full screen here uh let's make this a little wider there we go all right, what do you think of this one? Have you been to Prague, by the way? <laughs> Prague, Idaho, or? Uh... <laughs> no. no, the other one. <laughs> no, no, no. The only place outside the US I've been is, is Hawaii, and that technically is. <laughs> really? I've been to Canada once. Yeah. That doesn't count, that doesn't count. No, <laughs> no I, I, really, I really dig this image. I think that uh, I like the treatment. Um, you know, I, I think it gives it sort of an old world feel. I like the perspective shooting up. I like the the shallow depth of field, the sort of tilt shift look. Mm -hmm. Whether it was done in post or it was actually done with a tilt shift, uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it looks really nice. Um, my only my only suggestion is it would be nice if that gentleman in the lower right wasn't there. Mm -hmm. That goes. And it feels like our vertical. It feels like it's. I don't know. Does it feel like it's leaning to the right a little bit? Uh, it is. Yeah, it does. It does feel like it's, I mean, it might be because it's not exactly centered. So there's, there's more yeah. weight on the right side, which also contributes to that tilt. When I looked at the, when I looked at this image, I, I like it. I mean, I like the detail in it and I like the, like, when was this shot kind of feel of it. I agree with taking that guy out of the bottom right. Um, but then I struggle with what's the subject. We always talk about the subject of these images. Like what, what is the subject? the overall thing is the subject or is it is it the, the clock faces and if it's the clock faces i want to be a little bit closer so i can see more detail on those those clock faces and i thought you would have said of all people that you know what i want to see the i want to see the top of the tower you know if you paint up a little bit more to get the top of that tower in there you know it would have been but that would have made a different shot obviously I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm I'm good with it not because that's but that's out of focus, right? So that's been pulled down. So mm -hmm. my eyes, I'm not really interested in chasing out of focus areas. Mm -hmm. So I like I like the idea that the clock is the brighter point in the image, that it draws my attention there, and I assume that, that that's what the maker wants me to do is to look at the clock. So, yeah. you know, it's it's great. It's not Peter's best. I mean, come on, Peter, but it's good. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it is. It is cool though. I mean, I want to. I want to go there. Prague is on my my list of places to visit one day. All right. Well, thank you, Peter, for that one. You got a couple from Peter in here. Let's go through all of them. I think. Let's see. Here's another one uh, from Peter Levshin. The next one up. Yeah, this one was scary. Yeah, he calls Canon small depth of field great model kept still for hours. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> that is freaky. That is freaky. And it's made with human skin. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I made the comment in there that uh, that this was you know reminding me of Talking Tina, mm -hmm. you know the Twilight Zone episode. But oh yeah, I, I think was thinking more Chucky. Chucky or one of those <laughs> Bride of Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a little. Yeah, and you could tell he was going for the creep factor in this too. It is. Yeah, yeah. Any kind yeah. of anytime a doll is staring at you and you can't get out of its gaze, you know, I'm like, yeah. I'm moving left and right trying to get her to stop looking at me, and she won't stop looking at me. So. Right, right, right. No, and this one, you know, clowns are freaky to some people, and mm -hmm. dolls are freaky to me. Like this is just kind of creeping me out. Yeah. Which you know, hey, that's. The image is working, right? Like it, like it has its, it has its place. So, um, 
I think it's really cool. I, I don't know what else you could do better. I mean, the toning is nice. The composition is nice. Uh, there's a shallow depth of field. Not, not as shallow as I would like. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like it's just it's a flat shallow, right? Like everything in the front's in focus and everything behind is soft. So not really, I wouldn't say great use of shallow depth of field. Yeah. Um, I know he didn't shoot this. He went back and dug it out of his archives. So did he? Yeah, which is which is fine. Right? Yeah. Well, no, I love it. No, it's it's great. Yeah, he's got a very deep archive. You know, as a little aside, my daughter um, Cameron, for some reason, I forget we were watching on TV, but for some reason, she she just proclaims out of the blue, as five year olds do from time to time, proclaims out of the blue. Well, last week it was, I'm a vegetarian. I don't want to eat meat. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then she proceeds to ask for a hot dog. And then, <laughs> then this week it was, I hate clowns. I never want to see another clown as long as I live. <laughs> I'm like, how do you get this stuff? Where is this coming from? <laughs> and then yesterday, what was it? It was uh, steak because we were talking about what to eat. And she's like, listen, and this is what she said. Quote, listen, I'm only going to eat two things, steak and french fries. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like wow okay all right we'll see how that works out for you <laughs> yeah 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 that's awesome that's awesome i love it all right moving on to the next one let's see okay it is peter's again peter's two more in here um this is uh his 5d2 shallowed up the field all my friends in china he calls this one all right it's a shot of some miniatures Looking like, uh, what is this, uh, Chinese protesters, military people, etc., from old world China? Is that Mao Zedong down there in the right-hand corner? Yeah, I think he was. I think he was telling me that that most of these are Mao's face. Like if you look around, like there's a whole bunch of Mao in there in different, you know, different times and different faces and different outfits, and um, so. It, yeah. it, I'd seen this image. I'd seen this image before, so I'll let you critique it because I've seen it. You've seen it, yeah. I mean, I look at this image. I mean, it's a. I, I mean, this is like you said. This is not Peter's best work. It is. This is would be more in sort of a travel street photography kind of genre where you're walking down the street and you see this in the window of a shop and you're like, oh, that's cool, and you take a shot of it. But you know. It is really cool. And then what I was looking at the in the bottom right there, you see that that figure in the bottom right with the trench coat? Yeah. That yeah, looks like Kim Jong. <laughs> looks like Kim. It does kind of, yeah. That's Kim Jong's yeah. haircut right there. I know that haircut anyway. And he's in the background too back there. You see him? So yep. yeah. So no, I, I dig it. I dig it. Um, but again, you know, when we you know, as I've learned over the years and from you from doing these critiques what is the subject of the shot right so is the is the subject just look at all these look at all these little interesting figurines um or is there another subject or a message that the photographer the artist is trying to convey um i think this one is just i think reading too deeply into it is probably the wrong play where you just look at it like okay this is a cool shot this is very this is a touristy kind of shot where peter was roaming around china taking photos and got this cool shot right so but yeah, and and I think that when you see things like this, you you got to ask yourself that, like, what what is it about this image that, or what about the subject mm-hmm. that I like? Yeah. So when you capture it, it's not just a snapshot; it becomes a photograph. So, you know, for me, you know, I like the woman in the red holding up the the, the rifle, right? Uh-huh. So then get down lower, shoot across the other the other head, and that's going to use shallow depth of field to the advantage. But also, it isolates her, right? Just like doing portraits sure. in a park, yeah. the yeah. same the same thing. And then, and then the story becomes a little bit more obvious to us as opposed to trinkets on a, on a shelf. Right. Yeah, I feel like I'm working a lot when I look at this image. You know, if you look at yeah. it, I mean, again, mm-hmm. it's fine. It's a fine image, you know, technically great on the, on the surface. But when you look at it and you're like, okay, when you look at it with critique eyes, especially like we do once a week, I'm like, okay, right. what am I looking at? What, what is the, what was Peter trying to tell me with this image? Was he tr- or was he trying to tell me anything at all? Was he just recording some photons at the time, or is there a hidden message? And if there, like you said, if there was a message, if you were to like maybe elevate the woman in the red with the rifle and make her the subject with everyone else kind of out of focus in the background, then it becomes 
okay, you know, she's, she's leading this protest and a female with white hair and a long ponytail and a rifle, that's kind of cool and badass. And let's, you know, you take it from there versus, okay, let me figure out what he was trying to say. Yep, I agree entirely. Yep. Cool. All right. Go back and shoot it, Peter. Yeah, Peter, come on. What are you doing here? All right, so let's move on to the next one. All right, it's the last one from Peter. Um, too many people. What does he say down here? Too many people, so just make them blurry. Shallow depth of field. So this is like an experiment, <laughs> experiment in Peter doing shallow depth of field. Very cool. All right, yeah. what, what do you think? I like it. You know, it's it's kind of neat. It, it feels very Harry Potter to me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, that, that toning and everything, I really like that. Uh, it's leaning. You know, it's this definitely leaning to the right. I think I made a comment in there about it, about it leading. Um, yeah, it is leaning. Yeah, don't right. worry about the level horizon. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's true, though. Like, that's a, they're distracting foreground, so let's make them soft. I mean, you could do it in post. You could do it in camera uh, if you have a tilt shift or something like that, um, super shallow depth of field. But it definitely works, and it shows how it trains or focus on the tower. Now, is it okay to do that all the time? Not all the time, but is it okay to do that, for example, if you were going to submit an image like this to competition? Would, would blurring, distracting objects be a, a point against you or just you using the tools? Um, if it felt, I think if it felt natural, right? Like if you just, if you just took the brush tool and you blurred out a corner, it's, it's going to feel like there was, like there was a thumbprint on your lens. Mm -hmm. Um, but using a, uh, linear gradient in, in this way would feel more natural because if you were shooting this with a view camera or a tilt shift lens, you could definitely achieve this. So it feels more natural. So yes, using this in competition could work. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So moving on to the next one. Thanks, Peter, for submitting these. You are, uh, you're a man on fire with these images. <laughs> All right. He has a lot. He has a lot to choose from. He's very motivated. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Peter. Um, also, Andy S. is in here. Welcome back, Andy S. Haven't seen you submitting for a while. Um, so let me read her. Uh, let me go back and read the uh, caption. Historic Gleason Jail. Doors and windows are of particular interest to me because they reflect the architectural fashions of past time. No texture was added to this. Natural stucco wall texture, just some basic editing and color grading to accentuate the natural texture of the wall. She shot it on a Canon Rebel T6i at 60 millimeters at 1 125th of a second, F F6 at ISO 100. F6 at ISO 100. All right. All right, so I have this up full screen now. Yeah, so, I love the graphical element of the the tree framing the window, uh -huh. right? Like windows normally frame things, but in this case, the tree is framing the window. So yeah. it's a nice abstract. I like that. I have, I have a couple shots that remind me of, you know, this reminds me of those shots. So I, I'm a big fan of that. I like that. I like that shape. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like it too. I, I was, when I looked at this image, I was like, if that's a jail, that tree is in the <laughs> wrong spot. That's a security risk, right? <laughs> That's a, yeah. that's an egress route right there. <laughs> no, this is this is a cool shot. I like it. I like these kind of shots because they make you think, right? You, know, you look at this and it's she's got you know compositionally wise she's got the the elements on the right so it's purposely weighted to the right. It's got yep. the window in the in roughly in the rule of thirds in the upper right hand of the shot. Um, what I would have thought that someone like you, Troy Miller, would have said would have been. Um, you know, I'd like to see this in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I'm starting to get a reputation for the whole black and white thing. Hey, uh, reputations and stereotypes are there for a reason, man. <laughs> it would look good in black and white, but I'm not going to suggest that because she intentionally uh, added, you know, she didn't add any texture, but she intentionally edited it to bring out the color grading. So I respect yeah. the fact she, she, she chose to leave color in there. Okay. Um, my only suggestion is is a little bit tighter crop. Uh, crop crop the bare space off on the left, right up to the tree. Leave a little 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 bit of space for the tree on the left. You know, just the branches across the top, mm -hmm. and then bring it up from the bottom a little bit, maybe just to uh, where the the two branches lie off. 
just right there because we really don't need that. And that'll bring a little more focus on the window. Love it. Love it. Cool. Yeah, I love it. But not black and white. <laughs> <laughs> you're resisting. <laughs> I know you're resisting, man. You are resisting. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, so I'm going to pop out of Andy's. Thank you, Andy, for submitting that. Welcome back to the fray. We miss you. Yeah. Speaking of missing, Shiva uh, Sharifi's in here. She hasn't been in, hasn't submitted an image for a critique in a while. She says, hey, gang, big, back for some more portrait critique work from a recent shoot. And yet again, I got stuck for a long time deciding on three similar portrait images and trying to define which is the best image. Here's the one I chose for the Twip Pro community. What a gorgeous model. That's awesome. Look at that. Yeah, this is fantastic. And, and I'll say, Shiva, that, you know, choosing the best is never the best, right? Like there's no best image mm -hmm. uh, because everybody's going to have a favorite. <clears throat> so there's always going to be things in them that, that everybody's going to like. So if this is your favorite, the best for you, then that's, that's the right choice. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I, I really like this shot. My, you know, I had looked at this earlier and the only thing that I could really have added to this was I think that uh, she needs a little bit of light in the eyes. And, mm -hmm. you know, for a shot like this, it really does need that. And some dodging and burning in here would help because her arm, her right arm that's bent up, the face of that is bright. Uh, so the underneath side of our arm, yeah. yeah, the underneath side of our arms are always brighter. So it always needs some burning in. You always want to burn those in. Okay. And that, that'll bring some more attention to her face. But when you shoot this, you could always put a, a strobe on, maybe like minus three stops. That'll give a little wink in the eye, a little twinkle. Can she, can she or, fix, you think she could fix that in post? Like, like to, I, do. I mean, bring the eyes out a little bit. I mean, assuming she shot this in raw, right? And there's data in there. But bring, bring, yeah, bring the eyes out, add a little catch light in there to make them twinkle a little bit. I wouldn't add a catch light. I'm not a big fan of adding catch lights. Mm. They always look fake to me, unless you're really good at it. I'm not really good at it. So I would just bring her eyes up. Um, there's a couple really, really simple and cool techniques for eyes that um, maybe I'll record a little quick uh, video and, and share that for doing some eye stuff. Um, but yeah, bring the eyes up because they're a little bit dark, especially in this environment. This is a beautiful soft portrait. You want to see that. Love it. Love it. Cool. All right. Thank you, Shiva. So we'll move on from that one. And now we're moving to Howard Yermish, natural skylights on the Redondoran <laughs> Trail, Rodondoran, is that how you said it? Shot it with his 5D Mark IV, 100 millimeter, F2.8 macro, 160th of a second, F5.6, it's ISO 1600. All right, so, all right, my first thoughts on this is, I dig, I dig the framing. I love these shots that are that that just lead your eye into the center of the frame and tell it explicitly where to go. Um, and you do that with framing and light, right? So, like, like yep. we always talk about, the lighter areas of the image, your eye is automatically drawn to that for the most part, right? There's and the sharp, yeah, the sharp areas as well. Sharp areas, brighter areas, and then framing, which is kind of like a traffic cop pointing your eye in the right direction. Um, when I'm looking at this image, like I look at it um, subjectively or objectively, and I'm thinking, okay, this looks like it is wanting a subject. Like, I don't know, and this is just me, subjectivity, right? Like, I want to see, like, I'd want to see someone walking down that path or a dog or a horse or a rabbit or something in the image that anchors the image and says, okay, this is, this is the reason this was shot. Um, but on the other hand, I'm looking at the image, I'm like, okay, well, it could stand on its own if you're telling the story of, you know, right up the path to the left there is a, is a gingerbread house where the little witch lives. <laughs> 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 you know, so something like that. I don't know. But yeah, again, this whole thing is subjective, right? What do you, what say you? Uh, I, you know, I do. I love these kind of images and, and I have so many of these that I took when we were on a vacation in Hawaii because, you know, it's so green and it's very overgrown. And the challenge that I always found was exactly what you're mentioning was what's my subject, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm walking through here. I love it. It feels good. It smells great. What is, <clears throat> what is my subject that I'm going to be able to look back at this? Right. Um, for me in this image, it's the light on the ground and the path in front of me. 
Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I think that, that that is enough subject for me. In this image, however, I think that the light in the background is too bright because it's out of focus and it's bright. It's drawing my eye there. Yeah, that's the first and it, thing you look at. Right, right. And I understand, like, by the title, Natural Skylights, that, that he likes that light coming through there. But I think if you burn down that light in the background a lot— so the primary bright spot is the foreground. The secondary bright spot is the background. You'll find that the image is more pleasing because your eye is going to go to the bright spot in the front, then follow the path, see that little extra extra light. Ah, you're going to come back to the front, mm-hmm. and you're going to go back again. You can just stand there and look at that all day, yeah. right, walking back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I wonder what some other – we gotta we have to do start doing critiques and have some of the other members in here because I'd like to know – yeah. Like what? A, what? A, like if we brought Craig on with us, you know, Craig Colvin or someone like that. Like, what would he do with this image? I know what he would do. He put a naked woman right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, this is a great background. I could just put a, <laughs> a painted lady right there. <laughs> but you know, the the vision that myself or Craig or anybody would have that they would normally put a subject in this is a lot of the same attraction that uh, a landscaper would see for just that space. Yeah. Right? Like the leading lines yeah. and the, yeah, and the right. framing of the trees. Like they see that as the landscape. I see the landscape with a person in it. Yeah. But we see we see it for the same thing. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? So yeah. if I was to pose somebody in here, I would, I would actually skip the bright spot in the foreground, put them in the bright in the back, shoot into the darkness, use the light off to my left, which would be like, you know, a main light. And it's same the same we like we like the area for the same reason. Yeah. We just use light a little different. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well thank you, Howard, for that. That's uh that's awesome. I love such a diverse set of images that we get to go through. Um, oh no, I love it. I love it. And look at this one from Mark Harris. Mark says uh, this is for the shallow depth of field critique topic. I previously posted another portrait of Hannah in in this park session. Nikon D850, Zeiss 50 millimeter F14, 2.5, ISO 200, 2500 of a second. I had a reflector on the table where Hannah was sitting. Nice. All right, let's pull this up. All right, definitely shallow depth of field. So yeah. it fits in the, if it's the criterion, right? I always love Mark's images because they're they're so different than like what I would shoot. Mm-hmm. I guess everybody's kind of like that, but like this is a this is like a simple model, right? And I always like ah, oh, that's such a I would never think to pose that way, yeah. right? Like I I love that. I think it's I think it's really really good. Um, good use of shallow depth of field. I like how the background hand, her right hand, is out. That's really wonderful. Do mm-hmm. um, you have any problems with her with her head being cut off, or is that okay? You know, in this in this instance, I, I mean, I I do, but I'm trying to embrace it because it's a it's it's a different abstracty kind of portrait, right? Mm-hmm. She's not looking at me. Um, it's just kind of like her in the moment. I can kind of see that. What I was gonna say is is I struggle with her hair being blown out, and then. Um, not not being attracted to her face by the light you know i feel like the light uh could be tuned a little bit better and maybe some toning i feel like her skin tone there's too many tones in her skin from her face to her hands yeah it it feels disjointed to me but maybe that's his intention so now i have a a question so uh and this has nothing to do with photography do people's eyebrows actually grow in that color? <laughs> like, or did she did she do that to herself? Like, I'm wondering. I, 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 I've never seen. I've, do you, do you, have you seen blonde <laughs> eyebrows? I've never seen, like, I've seen light-colored eyebrows. I've never seen blonde eyebrows like that. It's interesting. Well, considering her dark roots, I'm pretty sure that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. I like it though. I, I do. Cool. I dig it. I think it's a really cool look. I think it's a really cool look. Yeah. Trey, I think I think you should consider getting nose rings and piercings like that. I, think, <laughs> I, I, as for, I used to have an earring. I used to have a, I used to have an earring piercing. Did you just one or two? Just one. Just one. Back in the eighties, that's what you did, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You couldn't have two back then. You know, you, no. you gotta have one. You gotta have one. All right. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Mark Harris, thank you for this shot. 
Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Good job, Mark. Mark, go back and, and maybe just play with some of the toning. Like, you know, play with some presets, play with some styles, play with that. I think that there's a lot more in this image um, than where it's at right now. The pose is amazing. The use of, of, you know, the focus and everything is great. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. All right, moving on. Uh, the next shot is from Craig Stampley for the shallow depth of field critique. 100 millimeter f2.8 and a half a second. I think this is the first time we've had Legos. I know. The, this uh, is like imagine yeah, if there's is, a real car like this. That is, this cool. is great. No, this is so this is so cool because right away when I saw it I knew it was Legos. And I got a friend of mine who's obsessed with Legos and he's always photographing like Star Wars Legos and telling stories and stuff like that. So and this is really good because this this feels um well, it's intentional. It feels intentional. It, it it works. And it could be like a real world shot too, even if this was a life size car. Yeah. You you could you could use the depth of field like that, right? Absolutely. And that's exactly why depth of field is so powerful because immediately it draws our attention right to the gauges. Yeah, and, there's no and this question. This gauge about, says this one is going 325 kilometers per hour, right? So, yeah, it needs, it needs the RPM is nearly redlined. It that's is great <laughs> with the door open. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great that is really cool. so craig what you need to do is drop out that black in the foreground or in the in, in you know in front of the car right and drop in drop in some of your motorsport stuff or something and and make it look like it's it's actually moving like just put like a, a motion of pan blur back there yeah 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 just some trees just some some trees flying by but that'd be weird with the door open though wouldn't it yeah i dig this too i dig this i'm, I'm a huge fan of, of shallow depth of field um, and slightly oversaturated, maybe a sprinkle of clarity, you know, in, in images. And I love, I think I, I learned to love shallow depth of field decades ago when, uh, when I was learning photography in the military, because it occurred to me that given the proper lens, anything could become a background for you, you know, especially in portraiture, you know. Generally speaking, anything could be a background, which is Yeah, really welcome to wedding days. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it is. Oh, absolutely. I've shot into dumpsters. I've shot into, you know, piles of tree limbs. Wow. And it looks great, right? Yeah. It just, yeah, it's color. Yeah, it's just color. Yeah, color splashes shapes. of color. Yeah. So if you blur your eyes and look at a certain area, you're like, oh, yep, there's a background right there. Cool. I dig it. Dig it. All right. Thank you, Craig Stampley, Brisbane, Australia. All right, moving up. Next one, also from Craig Stanfley. This is a 50 millimeter shot at 50 millimeter f2.5 at one two fiftieth of a second. Yeah, this is my uh, this is my pick of the week for our shallow depth of field. Yeah, this is my this is my favorite. Yeah, I really like. Yeah, I really like this. I he had made a comment about how, you know how somebody said that they should have pumped the brakes to turn the lights on. That would have been cool. But then I thought those are fairly bright and i think it would kind of kill the mood a little bit um that soft light i, I wish it was a little more contrasty i think the the highlight reflections can have a little bit more punch but that's just subjective mm -hmm. but i really like the use of shallow depth of field here i think this is this is really spectacular yeah no i agree nothing nothing to add there i, I definitely like this and this goes along with what, what i was just saying about anything can become a background right and being able to isolate a particular subject using shallow depth of field is like a superpower in photography, you know, which is, yeah. which is why you should be buying awesome glass instead of obsessing about new cameras, Troy Miller. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Nikon Z. <laughs> I'm not obsessing. It's a, it sounds like a badass camera that I'm going to own soon. It is. It does sound badass. I know. I love and it. I do have a bunch of really amazing glass for it. So <laughs> yeah, that's good. You have a nest, you're nesting waiting on the camera to show up. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yes. I've had a conversation with all my other cameras, so they don't feel bad. Oh, uh, the nice. Sony. Nice. Yeah. Your they're sister they're cameras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're good. <laughs> That's awesome. They're ready to move on. All right, here's, here's one from Stephen Scharf. What's up, Stephen? Uh, for the shallow Steven. depth of field critique, acclaimed world superbike championship motorcycle racer, Pier Francesco uh, Chile, pronounced Pier Francesco Chile. There you go, Chile. Thank you. All right, let's bring this up. Again, portraits, right? Who knows what's yeah. back there? Who knows what's yeah, behind no, this guy? <laughs> 
No, it's great. It's great. This is a this is a great portrait. I mean, this is a very fantastic do every day kind of portrait using Charlotte at the field. I mean, I, I this is what I do at weddings constantly. Um, is is making that background turn into something other than you know the twenty seven people standing back there on their phones. Yeah. So. Yeah. Which is cool. I mean, that's a, I think that's a superpower because you know you can do that with people. You can do it with flowers. You can do it with cars. You can do it with the yeah. With a cup of coffee, you know, whatever. That, I think that's one of the things that is missing from, at least with optics and smartphone photography, right? Because you're, you, you're, unless you simulate it with, with computational photography, you're not going to be able to get the shallow depth of field look with a smartphone without software. Um, right. Um, however, that, that reminds me, there's a really cool app that people should go check out. It's called Focus. F O C O S. Yep. Have you played with that thing? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my God! Especially if you have a, one of the new modern cameras with multiple lenses that can detect the the distances of things. Basically, it allows you to uh, use computational photography to control smartly and accurately depth of field using software in your phone, which is sick and depressing. Considering, <laughs> yeah, considering the lenses that you need to do that on traditional cameras, now you can kind of pretty convincingly convincingly do it on, with a with a smartphone. So it's called Focus right, F O C O S. Yeah. Definitely go check. Yeah, it out. one thing to keep in mind is that that even though you might be able to do that with software or do that in post, you can't you know you can't replace lens compression. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you always need. You, you need that lens there. That, that, the, the beauty of having a lens is the perspective that it changes from your subject to the background. So the longer lenses, more compression, completely changes the, the face and the features and the background. So like this is probably shot with a long lens and you just can't get the same shot with a wide lens. So you can't fake that part of it. No, no, you can't. Yeah. You can get closer than you could say five years ago, but you're, yeah. you, can't, yeah. you can't replicate it. All right. Thank you, uh, Stephen, for submitting that. Another one in here from Stephen Scharf uh, for the shallow depth of the field critique. He says, his former Dutch F1 driver Jan Verstappen drives for Team Netherlands or Netherlands at the A1 Grand Prix in Laguna Seca. All right. Let's bring that up. Yeah, I dig this. This is, this is such a neat crop. You know, it's hard to crop cars and, and, you know, we always want to see space, see them moving and all that. But this is a really good crop. I, I, I'm curious whether this was cropped in post or if he shot it this way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing it was it was it was cropped in post, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's great. You just shallowed up the field and what an amazing shot showing motion and everything. Absolutely. And it, and it shows the skill of the photographer as well to be able to get a shot like this at such shallow depth of field with a car like this moving as fast as it's moving, right? I mean, it's not like you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna shoot at a smaller aperture and you know, when, they, when the car comes around this corner right here, I'll have between this spot and this spot and it'll be sharp. No, it's like slightly soft on the nose of the car and slightly soft behind, you know, on the Netherlands and the driver is completely sharp in there. So very nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah, handled very well. Yep, Stephen Scharf, showing off your skills. All right, next one, Tim Engel. Oh, boy, here we go, Tim Engel. Tim Engel used a $5 Walmart mirror as fill light. I told you, this, Tim is the MacGyver of photography. The, he is. The, if, Tim, if Tim aware that, that uh, the, photogra the photographic industry has created safe alternatives to mirrors, <laughs> for reflectors? I mean, does he know that? Like, I mean, maybe he just doesn't know that you can get a reflector <laughs> that I folds up and sticks in your bag. Maybe he knows, but he's like a $5 Walmart mirror versus, you know, a $500 reflector, and they're reflecting the same thing, photons. So. Right, right. Well, then, well, yeah, and don't drop that mirror in the pool. No, you don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> but if you did, it's only 5 bucks, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it's a hundred. It's a hundred. 50 bucks to get the guy to complete the glass out of the pool. Oh, right, right, right. 
Well, if it's a Walmart mirror, it's probably made of plastic anyway. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Kudos but look there. at the shot. Look at the color on her. Like her makeup is flawless. I love that. Yep. I know what you're gonna say though, and Tim knows what you're gonna say. I bet. Uh, the arm. <laughs> she's too close to the what side is, of the frame i'm learning your algorithm man i know now. i'm sorry i'm sorry i know tim is amazing right but i don't understand why he can't fill the frame properly like <laughs> he probably put this in here just to see if you'd notice yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so i, I mean know. so those two things so there's two things that i noticed in this and that's the like the the lighting and we both agree the lighting's great and and i love the pose and the look on her face and all that stuff um, uh, but the, the crop cropping off the top of her head. And then there's that black sort of oil slick to the right of her head up there. And then yeah, you could crop. Yeah. You could, you cropped all that off you and then burn off, her. Right. Band -aid. But yeah. what about, do you feel like she's too tight in there? Did he crop her too tight on the, on her uh, right side? Yeah. I, I I'm, I'm wondering though, <clears throat> is this uh, straight out of camera? Like, did he, did, did he shoot it that tight? And if he did, um, does do those those things like you know cropping off the arm and stuff does that bother him? Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I try to shoot because I shoot in in a crazy environment. I always try to shoot slightly wide, and then I can crop and balance later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, give yourself some. Breathing. I know that. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not the guy to do a fashion shoot and shoot and then hand files to the editor. You know, that's that's not going to be my strong suit because I need to crop later to create that balance. Yeah. You know, if I'm working fast. Yeah. Um, I mean, his handling of light and her face and the makeup and that's all spectacular and what a killer use of, of, you know, tools. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And that, that is, that is important too, because, you know, when you go out into the environment, you need to look around. Sometimes there's a building across the street that's, that's, you know, throwing light or a window that's reflecting light. Yep. And to know that you can use that light, that's, that's what sets you apart from the average photographer. Yeah, and I've seen Tim do that actually. I've seen him in, yeah. you know, notice notice reflections and of off of particular light. And Tim Tim's lived in Sacramento, I think most if not his entire life, and uh, he knows where the sun is going to be during certain times of year to use certain buildings as fill light or main light. <laughs> so you know, right, he, he treats right. in that way. So. Yeah, but but cool shot, Tim. I would love for you to sound off in the comments for this for this episode, this critique episode, and let us know what your mindset is around cropping. And did you crop this in camera intentionally this tight, or you know, or did you do it in post because you want it like this? Like, just let us know. Give us some give us some background. Because Troy says yeah. uh, you need to be schooled on your cropping skills. <laughs> <laughs> Troy did not say that. <laughs> no, no I, I do. You know, there is a there is an intentional cropping for tension, right? To create tension in the image. Yeah. So you can do that. Um maybe not like that right there, like, you know, it's uh, just another centimeter or so show her arm. Yeah, yeah. Well Tim, let us know. Defend yourself in the comments. All right, here we go. And the final one is from a brand new member. I think Thomas just joined us uh within the last day or so. Thomas Aaron. So, Brand, welcome, Thomas. He says this yeah. is uh, image title unnamed swamp in Florida. All right, bring that up full screen. Photograph of swamp Florida. Look at that. Look at those those predators about to kill their prey sneaking up on it. <laughs> <laughs> the turtle sneaking it. I know. I love that. I love. I love that. That's what I would have named this one. You know, stalking the yeah. prey. <laughs> stalking the prey. Yeah. Who? Which one's stalking? Which one, though? Exactly. Right. Exactly. The bird's <laughs> like, you don't think I see you, but I'm gonna flip flip you over and have lunch in a minute. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, this is this is a really cool this is a really cool image. I mean, there's a couple challenges that I have with it, and and some of it is the cropping. Right, like the bird is is forced way up in the top, and I wish that there was some more breathing space in here. Um, but I get what he's doing. I get that we're showing the you know the log with the turtles. Um, if you're editing this in Lightroom, I would suggest you know a little bit more blacks. I think there was a comment. Uh, I think maybe Mark made a comment about blacks. Mm -hmm. Need to bring that down. And then the the left side is so bright. You know, there's maybe a reflection or a flare going on in there. Mm -hmm. You could put a linear gradient in there and even out that tonal exposure. Yeah. 
So anytime you have a bright spot that's in a corner, it leads the, the viewer's eyes out of the image, and we don't really get to see the whole image. So, Well, we, we talk a lot about, uh, or you talk a lot about, images that look better monochromatic versus color. Is, would you say this is the opposite? Like this one, I kind of want to see the color in here. I kind of want to see, if this, is, if this is Florida swampland, I kind of want to see what color was that water? Was it murky brown? Was it greenish or aquamarine? Or, and what's going on with the foliage back there? Is it dry? Is it green? And that log, I want to know, you know, I, I, I feel like I want to know a little bit, I want more data and color would bring that into this image. I and mean, like we say with a lot of the images, yeah, ask yourself, does color add to this? And I look at this one, I'm asking myself, is it stronger black and white? And what is the artist trying to tell me that with this being black and white versus color? Or True. has he just been listening to other Troy Miller critiques? And <laughs> what, what do you think, man? What do you think? I mean, would, would, I, I, in all seriousness, would, would color make this a better image or no? It depends. I mean, if those reads in the background, for example, were yellow and or like a really, really dark green, and then the log was like a like a burnt brown, and then the turtles are green, uh, you're going to get some color contrasts in there, and then that's going to work, mm -hmm. right? But if everything is sort of muted, I don't know what color the turtles are or the bird, but if they're all muted tones, browns and, and dirty greens and the water maybe the water wasn't you know like a dark color mm -hmm. then, then 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 there's no color there to help it yeah yeah so yeah you're right it you depends know. it depends on if you know if if there if there was enough color in this in this image to tell the story or it is dropping it out tell the story more so yeah Thomas, right, I would, right Thomas, i would love to see this image um the color version of this image if you can post that in the comments i would love to see what that looks like so that we can Kind of oh yeah, good idea. idea. Yeah, go ahead and post it. We have the power with Twip Pro to do that and continue the conversation. Yep, yep, yep. Well, cool, man. I think that's that's uh, that's think, all of them, right? I, got I think there's one more that just came in. If you want to grab it, if you want to refresh. Oh, okay. Let me go back in there. Yeah, I'm trying to. Let me go back in or refresh this. Michael Couch, he snuck in like four minutes ago. Uh, let's see, day created. There we go. Oh, look at that. Okay. Bad yeah, luck. So not a shallow depth of field, so to speak, but maybe. Let's see. Yeah, I guess it is, huh? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. He says, this is from uh, a member of Michael Couch. He says, bad luck. Shot this about a year ago on Skid Row, and I've been editing it ever since. Timmy loves to talk, but you can't understand a word he says. I know people like that. Um, I run into him every once in a while on the street and he loves and he is not shy about drugs. Tommy plays by his own set of rules. A little secret. I named my street photography after punk songs. This one is by Social Distortion. Have a listen while you take in this photograph. Oh, ah, OK. So we have to bad luck by Social Distortion. You have to listen to that as you uh, as you look at this image. Look at that. That pops. Yeah, you know that I, reminds me of that reminds me of like those those Guy Ritchie title sequences where they, you know, it's it's the the actor is doing some interesting thing and then they freeze it, you know, and throw the title up and do some sort of a oh and then it, it. yeah oh yeah you know and then they go on to the next person and they freeze it and cut them out and pop them out and some words pop out and they go on to the next one. I dig this. Yeah, I like it. Look at the detail in this though. Good grief. Yeah, no, this is this is a really good image of his, and I, I know that he's been he's been working to sort of find his uh, his vision, you know, for these images, and um, adding the color in the background has been something that he's experimenting with, and I think it's a I think it's a nice graphic element, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, sort of a duotone almost kind of thing, or actually, yeah, I guess you could call it like a duotone, right? Yeah, like the of, black. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, solarized. I love the. It's definitely solarized back there. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love the fact that in this image that you know you can see Timmy taking a drag. You see his cheek kind of sucked in, right? Like he's like he's smoking. He's yep. pulling a, a draw on that. And uh, there's a lot of story here. There's a lot of story here. So, and I like the addition of the color. I think it's something very graphical, and I like that. Yeah, it looks like this. This could definitely part, be part of a series, like we talk about, right? Yes. A series of images that are all edited in the same sort of style with the solarized splash of color in the background and high contrast, grungy image in the foreground. Um, this could definitely tell the story, like in this case of 
skid row or drug use or you know marijuana legalization in california whatever right <laughs> yeah whatever it is yeah whatever you whatever story you want to tell i mean you can definitely do that i i did i certainly uh encouraged him to do more of these so hopefully he'll post some more yeah, um, i would love to see more of these cool very cool congrats all right well troy miller let's go ahead and end this one um uh, if people want to catch up with you where where should they go to uh connect with mr troy miller and you know Spicy Jello, spicyjello.com, spicy jello Instagram. And we're still planning another F64 Live, which will be on the 16th of February. So, awesome. Here we go. Oh, so you have the date now, 16th of February. We have the date. Yeah. Yes, I had to buy my ticket. I got to buy my ticket now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> All right. We'll make a road trip out of it and just drive down there. Cool. All right, man. Well, thank you very much for this. And thanks to all the, the TWIP Pro members that submitted into uh, this critique session. We love doing these. These are, these are so much fun to do. They are, um, I think, Troy and I learn as much doing these critiques as you guys learn from hearing our constructive, hopefully, criticism about these images. So, yeah. So thank you, for, thank you to everyone who submitted. If you haven't submitted yet um, and you're a TWIP Pro member, please do so because uh you know these are these are heating up and I'm, I'm excited to keep doing these troy you know i'm gonna put you on the spot here man um we haven't we haven't picked a theme for next week's critique this one was depth of field you got it you got it on the yellow sticky <laughs> what is it what is it you're gonna okay so um sticking with the idea that it that it's something that you can apply to anybody's style of work Right. Yeah. Um, and then there was some chatter in the Twit Pro community about, you know, maybe giving more time for the theme. Yeah. Right. So that, that it can be created. OK. So so my thinking was is doing a duotone or a monochromatic image style and monochromatic doesn't have to be black and white. Mm hmm. You know, it can be toned. Uh, I think there was uh, a couple images a while back, I think had a sort of a blue tone and a black and white that I think Tim did. Um, so that's what I was thinking, like either a duo tone or a monochromatic image and maybe give like uh, two weeks or 30 days or something for people to shoot. So really it needs to be created between now and the critique time. Yeah, which is, so you're saying, you're saying we'll cre you'll, the topic will be we'll make the topic monochromatic or duotone and right. we're going to critique these next week or the week after Let, how about if we do two how about if we do 30 days okay and hopefully these are images that people can create in those 30 days okay so we'll make this one let's just make it official pulling up my calendar here um, 30 days from today will be October, let's say the 8th, let's say October 8th, Monday, October 8th. These are, we'll, we'll do, we'll record the critique session on Monday, October 8th, which means you need to get these in by the 7th and I'll make a post about it. Or one of us will make a post about it inside of Twit Pro. So, um, yeah. And then next week we'll just keep as general, right? So, yeah. yeah. So this coming one, you guys get a break. It's general, relax, whatever you want to submit, as long as it is awesome and legal, you know, that'll be great. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll go from there. Troy Miller, thank you so much for coming on again, man. You're, you're always fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And I want to, oh, you know, Troy doesn't know this, but for some reason we've been having Skype issues um, over, the, over the past couple of sessions and Skype has been throttling bandwidth and it has been throttling Troy's bandwidth throughout this episode, which is why his quality is going <laughs> up and down. I'm recording locally, so it doesn't matter. Um, but his video is coming into me and Microsoft, some nerd over there is turning a dial up and down <laughs> on, on Troy's feed. So just bear with us. We'll get it sorted hopefully over the next couple of weeks. Um, but uh, I think the, the content was, was substantive and that's what you guys needed anyway. All right, that's it. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. See you next time, Troy Miller. This is Twitter.